Kinds of patients are living on the thin line between life and death, with the latter being dominant. A clear-cut example has been Priti Kaba, whose hope of surviving cancer came to an end at a time when he, there was optimism she was going to make it after being fortunate to raise enough money to travel to India for treatment. Her death resulted in many people casting the disease because it took the life of a popular actress. Just like Priti, another cancer patient, Gloria Kalembo, died three weeks ago after trading on this unfamiliar path. Gloria had no well wishes to help her raise money for the treatment. She asked for financial assistance to complete her cancer treatment, for which she had a few sessions left. No help came until her untimely death. She was one of the few cancer patients willing to share their harrowing cancer experience with the medium. Her breast cancer had taken a toll on her. She had lost considerable weight and her speech was muffled. Two weeks after this interview, she succumbed to the same fate, which many cancer patients have unwillingly faced, that is death. Our research shows that many cancer patients who had died go through similar experiences. The major hurdle has been the lack of money to buy drugs that are insanely expensive. This is the reality that many cancer patients who have no financial resources come across. The only free thing associated with the disease has been cancer screenings. Our investigations prove that when a person is diagnosed with cancer and is screened, that's when the agonizing financial journey begins. This is the stage where many cancer patients throw in the towel after failing to meet treatment costs. We got hold of a cancer survivor, Veronica Mawire, who outlined the treatment costs, which are very steep in Zimbabwe. Chemotherapy in Utura. Kutenga mishonga cheti inu kuna kukostira kuma $200. Dungi waenda ku cancer center. Kutenga ku cancer center. Waningi wakati isa ka discount ipapo. Kana kukungu waenda kuma pharmacy chero inu tidure. Kutimuna zono piwa chemotherapy. Anutanga kuenda ku scan. Nema X-ray, nema blood test, iko kukuno di wamare. So kuti wanu wajinji wa sinama medical aid wane damputiku. Wajinji wanu ufa, nukuti wanu itanga, uoso gumira panzira. Treatment ya kensa igumira panzira. Unofana kukiti sa yosa. Zimbabwe is one of the most expensive countries in the region when it comes to kensa treatment. This has seen those of a better financial standing traveling abroad for treatment. For those like Gloria Kalembo, who have no sound financial muscle, her life will depend upon Mofa until she dies. Walking through the children's ward at Parinya Twao Hospital, we were met with the sorry sight of children suffering from cancer. There's still hope for them as Kids Can, a non-governmental organization, provides funds for their treatment. Many developed and developing countries are shifting towards the enactment of cancer policies as statistics show that the disease is killing more people than malaria, tuberculosis and the HIV and AIDS epidemic combined. In Zimbabwe, the National Cancer Registry figures show that 1,758 deaths were recorded in 2011, while 5,558 new cases were confirmed that year. Our research shows that these statistics are mainly Harare based. Despite these scary statistics, there has been no policy put in place in the country to address cancer. The government launched a 2013 to 2017 national cancer strategy, which underlined how the disease will be tackled. This strategy, however, fails to enunciate the funding mechanisms. It is against such a background that cancer patients have also weighed in and are appealing for the enactment of a cancer policy. So really we'd appreciate, you know, if the government could step in and do something for us cancer patients. 
I'll always call myself a cancer patient because I work with people with cancer and I really feel for them. If our government could just subsidize our cancer treatment, we'd be very grateful. Cancer Association of Zimbabwe, which has provided physically and mental support to cancer patients, have also added their voice to the call for agency in enacting a cancer policy by the government. The cancer policy in Zimbabwe is very important because it will reduce the, the number of cancer patients who are failing to access the, both the, 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 the diagnosis services and also the treatment services. The government has been criticized for its failure to enact a cancer policy, says the policy will be in place by the end of next year, according to the Deputy Minister of Health, Dr. Paul Chimeza. Yes, the policy is being developed. We are quite cognizant of uh, what needs to be done. And uh, we are with the patients that a cancer policy will certainly help. And we're working on that. By end of 2015, we believe if everything falls in place, we'll have a cancer policy. Yeah. Quizzed on why his ministry has not pushed through parliament the creation of a cancer levy, as has been lobbied by Dr. Chimeza, said the government was not supportive of this idea as it will result in verticalization of diseases. He said instead of having a cancer levy, the government has put in place a health fund to cater for all diseases. It's something that is, it needs a holistic approach, not a, a knee-jerk response. And we as a ministry believe a holistic approach that will stop the STIs from causing the cancer is an important approach. So we, we, we comp everything and deal with the matter in a wholesome manner. And this is what we are advocating for. The minister's sentiments could be a long-term plan, but the situation on the ground calls for urgent attention. However, if the government sticks to its word to have the cancer policy, which will detail how cancer treatment will be funded, among other things, by end of next year, there is hope for cancer patients.